again a problem. Yeah, hello, Hassan. Uh, we are back, Sorry. so don't worry. Yeah. Uh, we were getting more and more excited about the real thing. So if you want, I can rephrase it again. And so it's a little bit like a real company that is incorporated like, okay, and or let's put a, a company okay, that so is based. It's, it's first of all depending. If the project is uh, actually an NGO, it's, it's a foundation that is building a decentralized, uh, full, fully decentralized platform, that it's an open source that anyone can actually do anything on it. So it could be a foundation, it's a non-profit organization, and there could be an option that it's a company that is a profitable company that's building a specific application on the blockchain and they want to also monetize it. Okay. There, but it's depending on, on the project needs. If it's a, a company, it's, if it's a project that is profitable, it's want to create also a profit, or if it's an NGO that want to build a, such a platform for everyone to use. Yeah, so for but example, it, Ethereum is non-profit. Ethereum is an organization, it's a foundation. Is that non-profit? Okay, that is Ethereum. Yeah. And, yeah. and Bitcoin? Bitcoin is not owned by anyone, it's a foundation. It's a foundation it's itself. So. It's an open source, there is no company controlling Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, the, the other um, tens or hundreds of ICOs that are running r right now? these days. So for example, take uh, 10x. 10x raised 65 million. 10x is doing the app and the credit card that I told you about. Okay. It's already it's already operating. There is already the app is already existing. They're already issuing credit cards. They are actually a profitable company. They make money out of fees. Okay, and this company is based where in the world? Singapore. Singapore. So they have an LLC type of company there, and they raised this amount of money and they gave away a lot of tokens that uh, people yes. can exchange for Ethereum or Bitcoin, right? Yes, and they they basically did it for for Ethereum. Okay. They issued their token on the Ethereum blockchain. So how do they trust that the uh, these tokens they uh, they will increase in price somehow, or is it? Uh, I mean, do they increase in price? Do they float fluctuate or whatever? Or it depends of the of the Bitcoin to to fluctuate. And, so you know? There is the question: If uh, why are you basically buying these tokens? Are you investing in the project in order to build something good? Or you're investing just to make money. So basically, the projects cannot promise you the the the, the growing of the, the growth of the price. They cannot say the price is gonna grow. Okay. Because then it becomes then the token your token become kind of a security. Okay. It's kind of like you're promising that you will make actually profit. No one can actually promise you that you will make a profit. What they're trying to do, they're trying to build a service, a service, and they want trying to build, for example, an app that. You need to use their token in order to function inside of this ecosystem. And when you need a token in order to use a specific ecosystem, there is a demand. Where is it, when there is a demand, you need to, to look at the supply. If there is not enough supply, then <coughs> the, the, when there is a huge demand, then the price is going up. Okay, a specific question for one of the, uh, for any of the startups that they are into the ecosystem right now. You know how complicated it could be to raise money from personal, uh, like business angels or or investors or anything, do you think it's a good idea to to start an ICO in order to raise money? It's depending what you're doing. If they are doing an application or if they are creating a company for doing a specific whatever, IoT thing, technology. Do you think starting with an ICO, it will be the right way? I, I, will, I will answer it the same way. If you... Um, if you are, let's say, uh, just issuing IC in order to raise money and your token doesn't have any functionality, there is no need for your token in your business, then you shouldn't do an ICO. If you are building in a business or if you are building a, an app or you're building a platform, yeah. that in order for this platform to work, you need a token inside. The okay. token basically have some kind of functionalities. Then you need, to, you need to make an ICO. In this case, you can make an ICO and actually get this you gather the money through the ICO. So back to Clever now. I'm yes. thinking about why Clever should have an ICO. So I'm trying to get into Alex here because I think this is getting more and more interesting for Alex. Yes. So let's go into Clever's uh, business, uh, everyday business. They do things. Yeah. They have some smart contracts or they have some contracts or they, they, they could have like a, they could, be like some sort of a blockchain so that means that they could start an ico or not did, i mean did you see the presentation i sent you actually I, i'm going 
we, we're going to yeah, show I did. this guy the presentation uh, after okay. five minutes. So uh, <coughs> uh, what we want to build... Uh, Maybe I can I can share the uh, the screen and doing it here in, instead of... Oh, wow. I did something. Uh, wait. Uh, I, I don't see myself in the video. Uh, it should be here somewhere. But it's not anymore. Do you see anything? Uh, nope. Uh, what do you see now? Do you Normal see Skype without video, without anything. Oh, so nothing. Oh, here. Now it's oh. Yeah, it's something very tiny. Sorry, I need my glasses now. <laughs> okay, so uh, how can I share Does my... Uh, Does it move? Uh, Is it moving? Or? I think it's moving. You have, you have like three dots in the Skype down and then you can click on it and then share screen. Share screen and where is it? It's not here. Where is? Do you have the red button when you can close the call. Beside of it, there's three dots. Oh yeah. Or or no, we don't have any. Sure. Oh, share screen. Yeah. Okay, we have an, a different one. Okay. Do you? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm sharing right now. Right. Yes. No. Should I start it this one? Open or yeah, I don't know what is not open. Yeah, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, let's see my PowerPoint. How my you PowerPoint can, is. You can go directly to the. Okay, I'm. Do you see anything? Oh. Oh. Uh, no, you closed it. Do you, Do you get anything? Do you see anything? No. No, no, you closed it. You see that? No, you closed it. Okay, so you don't see when I am into. Uh, do you do you see it now? No. Uh, uh. No, but but I have the presentation. It's not a problem. Oh, you have the presentation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I already saw it, and I have it. I downloaded it. Okay, so uh, uh, maybe we can go directly to the presentation. Go go down to. Go down to blue link. Blue link. Blue link. Blue link. Blue link. Up. 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 Okay. Right there. Okay, do you see it now? No, you don't, okay. No, no, it's, it's, it's okay, it's but okay, I, I have it. I but I, it yeah, but I want you to, know what you see about, I want to right? share. I want to share, anyhow. Share, I start now, yeah. yeah. Okay, so okay. you know what is it, okay? Uh, yeah. It's here at the back, okay? Blue link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, blue link. Mm -hmm. First of all, I mean, in order to introduce Blue Link, I'm going to talk about what uh, we do at Clever, because it, it's like the next step. In Blue Link is going to be the next step in, in what we are, we are doing. Okay. So far, in the last uh, uh, 12 years, what we have been doing is uh, uh, we control uh, all the requirements uh, that all subcontractors uh, have to comply with in order to get into the uh, different projects in the construction sectors or industrial or mining uh, in order to reduce the liabilities uh, to the main contractor i mean so imagine whatever. i i am uh, avengoa i you am a big company and a i'm company. subcontracting a lot of people, lot of there. people. Yes. so i bring so you are you are liable for whatever happens to all the guys that goes into your um, construction site okay so okay. i i, I yes. am smart enough to talk to clever i know alex and say would okay. you do this work for me? Yes. So I yes. so what I will do contract yes. everything to you. Uh, and you, you talk to me and what I will do is check that every um, worker for whatever subcontractor that is going to work for you in the project in, during the two years that it, it's going to take the, the project for building a, a power plant, for, for example, uh, I'm going to check that all these workers comply with the different uh, legal, administrative, uh, everything. Uh, everything. So the worker is uh, entitled to go is there. entitled to go there. Okay. Why I do, uh, I have to, uh, I do, um, I have to do that because let's say that a worker goes into the site, it has an accident and after checking what happens, uh, it happens that uh, he didn't have the right uh, training to do the job they were doing. He, he was doing. Mm -hmm. The um, fault is of the main contractor 
of for not controlling that this guy hasn't the right training and mm, this way the main contractor is liable and, and it has to pay a fine okay liability okay 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 whatever so, so what mm, what do we do we check that all these workers have the training or the, the, the skills, the capabilities, skills uh, everything. And, and everything. The expertise so needed to go into the site and, and not to have an accident. So for me, that I, I'm, for example, Avengoa, I'm a company. Uh, for me, you are somehow like a blockchain because you're going to be checking that everybody that is on, on my side has the possibilities of being there. So, um, mm, so somehow yet, could, could you be uh, like a blockchain? I mean, in no. this kind of... Uh, we're we're going to build a blockchain in uh, but, but not in this, in, in not in this area, and not for Avengoa, but for our uh, for our workers. Okay. At the end of the day, what we are doing is we are controlling projects in fifty four different countries, okay. uh, and we have uh, we are controlling four hundred and fifty thousand workers all over the world in those fifty four countries. Most of them, 99% of those workers are blue collar workers, okay. are not white collar, are not uh, marketing guys, or uh, I mean, are welders. Are, uh, do, you, do you understand blue collar, white collar somehow? No. Uh, so, uh, los <laughs> obreros y operarios son los blue collar, ¿vale? los soldadores, carpinteros, callolistas y todo esto. Y los white collars, bueno, pues somos nosotros, somos la gente de oficina, marketing. So, so 99% are blue collar. So 99% of the workers that we have in, in our records are blue collar because are the workers that go to the construction site. Okay. Okay. So, so you, we need, have you need to be sure that they have the right skills, capabilities and everything yes. to be there. Yes. But so far we already have, because uh, we have to control that they have the right capabilities. Okay. So somehow we are certifying, because we have checked that they have the, the capability, so we are certifying to our customers, the main contractors, that these workers that are going into the site have the right capabilities. Okay. And also, as these guys, one of the, the I mean, the second thing that we do is uh, um, checking the access um, of these guys into the site. Okay. So we know how many or how long time those workers have been into the site so somehow we have the experience of these guys. I mean, okay. if one worker, uh, one welder uh, tells me I have six months uh, experience in, in welding, I can check and if I have been uh, dealing with this, this uh, uh, worker, I can check into my system that this guy has been working for this uh, okay. project somewhere. So somehow um, I have the experience of the worker validated and you have all history and the training yeah uh, certified by um, so far so so now so i have to um, because uh, i want to link with blue link what is blue link and i'm going to to um, so first uh, yeah yes, just okay. a quick question blockchain does it make sense with everything alex is saying and this is a very honest direct question well it depends on blue link. I mean, I, let me explain about blue link because <laughs> so, uh, blockchain ha makes sense inside blue link, okay. not inside the, mm, the job we are doing right now. So, okay. So what is blue link? So blue, blue link, link is another project. It's another project. It's the second uh, horizon or the second uh, uh, thing that we are building. I mean, one of the things that... Uh, are you we, following us, uh, Hosam? Uh, uh, yes, yes, okay. I'm following. Perfect. What we can do, uh, I mean, we can take advantage of all the information we have all these workers yeah okay okay now let me talk about linkedin and info jobs yeah okay so LinkedIn. you're going to be throwing an example about yes. yeah linkedin what is linkedin linkedin is a professional social network for mainly where 95 percent of the users in linkedin are white color okay First not blue color yeah not blue colors second thing in linkedin i put my uh, training yeah my education and i put my experience but nobody certifies nobody is certifying that i have that experience and okay. that nobody certified that i have uh, actually this is very common to to see 
Uh, I always uh, overrated the the skill level of um, language levels. Of yeah, and English everybody experience does. I don't put when I have been unemployed. Yeah, uh, and nobody okay. is, is certifying that. Okay. Okay. Info jobs is exactly the same thing for the job. Yes. Network. So yes. nobody is certifying, certifying nothing. When it comes to the certification, when you see the profile of this guy, then you call it for an interview and then you interview him. Oh, te tell me about this experience. Well, actually, I, I, I see a, a, a document, a, a program in the TV about welding. Yeah. So this is the, your only experience. Well, okay. <laughs> so far it is. Okay. Then you realize that, mm, uh, I mean, when you call it for an interview or, or whatever. Yeah, okay. So what we want to do is building sort of LinkedIn, but for the blue collar workers. Okay. Where the training and the experience is certified. Okay, so you certify, it, it will be so like- So far, I am certifying uh, right now, I mean, because at the beginning, I, I have been certifying all these, these workers, how? but- How? How, I'm checking, I'm asking these, uh, all the workers to, um, send me your your training your training certi certification and i validate it against the training uh, uh, center that and you can still lie about when you're yes. unemployed sorry you can still lie about you being unemployed at some point this is just about well, mm -hmm. just it, this is about experience but yeah. about the the um, i mean this is about the, yeah. the training but yeah. about the experience i can ask uh, i mean you have been what we do is uh, uh, to ask for yeah, the, the I mean, uh, is this guy ha has this guy been working for you in the last uh, yeah, 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 from yeah. these days? Uh, no, okay. This is, I mean, this is false. Uh, so far, we have been yeah. doing that. Wow. Yeah. And this is the 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 service that we provide to our customers. Okay. Okay. But what if what if I put this social network where the users are? Uh, we have three different kind of users. Okay, blue collar workers, uh, training centers, and the companies. In LinkedIn, I have mm -hmm. two kind of users, companies mm -hmm. and uh, white collar users. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have three. Blue collar workers, uh, they put their profile and they ask training certain centers to certify that they have their profile, mm -hmm. okay? And the training center that have uh, that has already issued the, the the training certification for this guy can put a check in this uh, profile. So this my profile will be higher rated or higher, uh, uh, it will have higher val valuation if it is certified by someone. Someone. But okay. you're saying that LinkedIn is not verified because it's all. No online. one. Yeah. No one is verifying so that. You don't think that references are certification enough? Because mm. if I say I work well, here and then... Normally, what I normally do is ask for reference. Yeah. I mean, I have been using That's LinkedIn. Proof. That's social proof. Well, it's, mm, 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 it's not social proof as long as you check, I mean, you ask for that proof yeah. to specific guys yeah. that mm, you know that they are going to answer yes. Yeah, but it's, it's enough proof to say yes, this no, person works here. No, it's like having a network where you ask the only people that know that are and that agree with you. If you ask the whole network, then this is social proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not okay. friends proof. Is what is linked. But still it's enough verification to say I work here. Hmm. The content of the well, reference is As long as the, uh, I mean, if no one, actually the social, uh, I mean, the verification of this, uh, as long as it doesn't come from the company itself, yeah. mm, it can be your friend. Yeah, but then still, it's yeah. proof that I work there. Uh, well, you don't know right. because you are asking one guy. But you're calling the sorry, to, but you're calling the company to say that this person worked. They worked there for this year. Yes, yes, they worked here. Yes. But if I put in LinkedIn, I worked at Bolt, and Rafa does a reference for me and says, "Yeah, she worked here." Uh, that's enough proof to say that I work there. Well, is is enough proof for you? And Rafa will be liable if uh, he's cheating. I mean, I have I have uh, a lot of times I've been asked by um, people that uh, I have in my network. Hey, can you write something about me? That yeah. is, but but it has to be good. Okay, what do you want me to write about you? Yeah, I mean, this a recommendation. Is not social proof. This is um, yeah. sort of. Um, okay, it's not neutral. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Okay. Are you following, Hosan? Yes, yes, I'm following. I'm already okay. thinking of something. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Should okay. I yeah, should I move on into yeah, well, the blue link? But, but so it's okay. Yeah. 
So what he says is he's going to be doing like a professional network for blue collar workers. Yes. So well, okay, we so, have we have all these uh, companies. That I have to ask uh, for uh, my experience validation. Okay. And I, I I can do two things. Whether I ask the company I've been working <laughs> for, uh, you, you can can you in, uh, prove that this I have this experience, or I have uh, I can ask for a consensus in the, in <clears> the <throat> network. So so now now i i have an idea okay we have a company that has been doing a completely different thing and now someone in the company crazy enough to think that there is a business opportunity and they want to create a business line that is a new one that is a professional social network for blue collar workers decided that it's going to be like a spin-off yes of the company actually it's going to be like this it is going to be like a spin-off okay so they have a database four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. i mean the reason why we believe i mean we could do the, the spin-off with no users from the from the beginning but the point is that uh, yeah yeah you're going to be cap capitalizing on what you got yeah, we, are, previously. we are we're having a lot of we are going to have a lot of fraction if i can I mean, um, there is a, a you can a capitalize there because out of these four hundred and fifty thousand workers uh, like 200 of them are in just 15 countries. So if I launch the, the social network in these 15 countries, in most of the countries, and there are like 50,000 workers already. And mm, having 50,000 workers into the system from, the, from day one, it's a good starting point. I mean, because uh, we know that... I so, no, which this one? is how... how uh, that one. This one? Uh, this one. Yeah. So you, so you want to capitalize on a, a database you've been uh, building up for all these 12 years. Mm -hmm. So you have a database and you decided that, okay, I want to do something different with this database. Okay, there is another question about if you can do it. I mean, and could spin off also because that is data protection rights and everything, yes. all this oh, information. No, I mean, oh. I mean, we we have we have been thinking about it, and we know because I mean it's data protection, but this data uh, uh, belongs to the worker. Of course, I mean all this data so should belong to, uh, the, yes. to the workers. And this is one of the reasons. Uh, I mean, so far, Facebook, the information that that you put on Facebook um, belongs, belongs to, to Facebook. Belongs to Facebook, and they do whatever they want. LinkedIn, the information that they put, that I put on LinkedIn, as long as I don't, I'm not paying uh, anything, yeah. uh, uh, it belongs to LinkedIn. LinkedIn can monetize this information that I'm doing, uh, and I'm, that I'm giving I'm, him for free. Okay. And the one that is, the only one that is making money for looking at my profile is LinkedIn, or okay. for looking at my profile is Infojobs. No one is making money. Okay. Okay. So in the case of this database, the data belongs to the workers. The data belongs to the worker, and the worker is gonna make money. Is gonna make money okay. as long as one people, so let's say the training center that needs to know when your certification are outdated, to send you a, a, a reminder a, a, or something. A reminder to come to my place, and I will give you the the. Okay, the, now we are training. getting in into, into your it. business idea. Yes. So you're creating like a separate unit, a, and and now you are thinking about how to get money for this. Yes. So you can do different things. You can go to the market. I can go to and the market. So you can and, go. He can go to the stock market exchange and say, "Clever is clever enough." to launch a new thing that is completely crazy it's not crazy i mean it's is different i mean we can we can say and you can get money from investors previous investors create a completely different com company but then you decided to go into the blockchain yes okay why so the why? because uh, as long as i have the information because it, it has to do with the, the, the ownership of, of the information. Uh, I don't want to be seen in the market as another LinkedIn that owns the information of the worker. I want to see to be seen as a de completely decentralized uh, system where the workers have their information. Those in that information, when you put into the blockchain or into the system that you, are, you have this welding certification, no one is going to change that ever. 
I mean, the 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 mm -hmm. chain or the the registry is gonna be uh, an erasable. Okay. Okay. Those are <coughs> some of the capabilities that provides the blockchain. Okay. That's so the reason why you, you we we thought okay maybe blockchain can be a way a, a software infrastructure <coughs> that we can use to build the system. Okay. So far we haven't been talking about uh, well shall we uh, launch an ICO? Okay. I mean, do we have to put a token into the system? And then it comes to the uh, okay, one of the possibilities is let's say that the worker have tokens and the worker has to pay x amount of tokens to the training certification in order to validate the certification. Okay. Let's say that the Mm, uh, okay, you're, ta you're talking this about way, yeah. this way. My profile, as long as it's certified, is gonna be better seen by the market. I have better profile than the one compared yeah. with you. That you have been, mm, you said that you are a welder, but no one is certifying that. Okay. So probably I have better value than you because I have spent uh, tokens into mm. get this certification. So or, Hosan, does it make sense? Everything we are doing yeah, here. Does it make sense? <laughs> does it make sense? <laughs> That's the reason I can. <laughs> I'm here it, today. It, it does make sense, and at some point, but I still try to understand because when we were trying to send, when we were talking about it, demon, we were talking about a private blockchain. Yes. And uh, if you're doing it on a private blockchain, how it will look like? Because then, if it's a private blockchain and yeah. I'm a blue worker, but I don't work with Clever and I want to participate, I don't have access to this blockchain. Yeah. Well, a uh, private blockchain, uh, from my per perspective, is not a, a blockchain that belongs to Clever. A private blockchain is a blockchain that doesn't belong to anyone that wants to belong. Okay. No. Yes, I, I, don't I, don't get I mean, it. the the this professional social network for blue collar workers are is for blue collar workers. If you are a mm -hmm. white collar worker, you have nothing to do here in the in the system. So you are not allowed to go into the system. I mean, it's not a question that you are not allowed. It's a question that it's not mm, worth for you <laughs> going into the system. Yeah, there's okay. nothing for you to do there. Yeah, well, but that doesn't that doesn't mean it has to be private. You can do it pu publicly, but uh, you're not allowed. That's it. Okay. I'm gonna be completely crazy about the example, or should I say the example we were explaining <laughs> the other day? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Okay, it's a crazy example. Okay. Great. Alex and I, we we went to a very sexual example. Say, okay, uh, this is a this is a gay club. Rafa, are you gay? No, you. I'm not gay, so I shouldn't be entering. I mean, it is public. It is a club. But I shouldn't be there because there is nothing for me. Well, maybe you want to go to this club and drink some beer. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You're not looking for anyone there. You're just that's going it. to drink there, or you're enjoying the music there. So yeah, that... but, but but this way you have something to do in 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 the bar in the in this blue collar thing. You have nothing to do there. Maybe or, or you what want. Do, what do you have to do? Maybe Work you can it? invest into that because you believe there is something. There is a network. There is a, there is an application. Although I'm not blue collar, I'm white collar, but I want to invest into that. I want to. Yeah, that's that's my point. Talking about okay, uh, I have a privacy. For that. I mean, okay. it's okay. public or it's private. Uh, has to do with investing on it. Uh, I mean, the or right not. to invest on it, or the right to enter or being a user of the system. Okay, because and that is a question to you, Jose. Yes. So, if only Blue Link uh, employees have access to it, how a new employees that are not connected to Clever have gonna enter the system? So they need to get, let's say, access to the system. In order for example, they, to Blue they, I, I, they I, I, open, I want to register there. They open uh, an account for free, okay. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you do is to start up with your profile, yeah, okay, as you do with LinkedIn, as you do with LinkedIn, okay. And you and have your profile there, okay. And okay, and, and then but next, when you are building your profile, the system will, will ask you, I mean, tell me about your job. Are you certified or, or not? Are you certified in, uh, what are you, a welder or, no, I'm marketing guy. Okay, this is not for you. 
there is no marketing guy in the in the box in the is okay yeah and and how do you get certified if i'm a welder but i haven't been working in so clever what before? i do is ask for a certification and okay. this is in, this is the, the way it, it will grow to whom do we do you want to ask for for a certificate to the training center okay is the training center in the system no okay then we need to then, start up like a new training center no, in the system uh, uh, so tell tell us which is the training center and there there will be a, a, an email to that training center asking for for first to join yeah uh, blue link and then to get the the, so, the 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 checking i mean to check the certification of this okay so if, uh, if the institution is not in blue link and they don't want to collaborate then you have a problem yes yes yes, yes. Then why uh, i mean that's the reason i mean why an institution i mean you have to uh, explain or you have to show the value for an institution to uh, to go so into, probably into the cost system them time if not money as well well it uh, is um, for sure it's not, it's not gonna take <laughs> cost you money to go into the to go into the system no no but it costs but them time as and long costs money because they're spending time and oh, okay. money okay. On, on your on your i mean own. but uh, you see, if you see the value i mean uh, me as a training certification i see a lot of value in mm -hmm. the in, in, to get into the system why because there so far for the blue collar workers that there are not so much applications related to that mm, i mean i know the industry mm -hmm. <laughs> and there is no uh, no proper ways to find those blue collar workers in the market okay for a training center it's worth definitely worth to have a list of how many welders mm -hmm. in aluminothermic uh, welding are 50 kilometers around my training center okay okay, okay these are mm, you have 25 how many Okay. Uh, have their training certification updated in the last, uh, of, I mean, the, in, in the next two months. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need the information, I, I mean, I need the contact information of these guys. Mm. Why? Because I want to send them mm. uh, an offer to, mm. uh, okay. to get the, 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 to get that information, mm -hmm. to get this contact information is something that uh, I have to pay. Yeah. Instead of paying mm, clever, Part of the money that I'm paying is going to the uh, worker. So the worker is getting paid for being looked yes. at? Yes. Okay. Okay. The, okay, the worker is question. getting okay. paid for being looked at. Okay. The worker is paying to for asking the, the certification. Companies are paying to get information about the, the, the workers and workers are paying, to, uh, are paying yeah. the companies to mm, get the experience certified. Okay. Uh, so Hosan has a question. Way. Yeah. Sorry, go so ahead. So what will happen in the case I am a blue worker, I go to the certificate center or I send the certificate center that I want to be certified in the blue link uh, system. Mm -hmm. But then I, I send them and I actually, let's say, um, bribe the people who is working in the certification center to give me a certificate to be certified on blue link. How can you actually trust the certificate center? Yeah that it will actually give the right uh, experience or that they, they're not bright or someone actually paid the money on the side so they can give a yeah. certification. Mm. So you're still in the need to trust someone to do it. This well, is why it's still kind of decentralized but centralized. Yeah. My point is that if I have to um, put in place a smart contract to do that, right? Is what you said at the beginning. Yeah, but how is the smart contract going to know that the information that is coming from the certificate sensor is actually real? I need to trust yeah. the certificate sensor. So I'm coming to the first question I gave you one hour ago. How I'm trusting that the mm, telephone I'm getting is the right one? This is another topic to be... No, it's, the same, it's exactly it's the possible. same topic. That's the reason why, because I, I mean... <laughs> So it could be okay. I, I want to understand. I mean, I don't have the I, I don't have the answer. I want to understand how the link between the real world and the, this world uh, uh, is going to be okay. tied up. Another um, example: If you're, I'm buying an iPhone directly from iPhone 8 Plus that it costs about 900 euros. I'm buying directly from someone that it works in the factory, or he said he works in the fa factory, and he's going to be sending that to me, and. Yeah, it looks like it is an iPhone and everything, but it's not an iPhone 
in real in and I check it up so how do I detect these things so this is about you said this is about trusting someone in the system or someone needs to be trust Hossam so so how do you detect that in a smart so contract there, there, is, there is a different option so one option is every I, every <coughs> phone have an IMEI which is the identity of the phone okay and if you enter this <coughs> IMEI it will tell you what kind of phone it is so you, you have an option to check this phone is it actually an iPhone or it's something else okay by the IMEI electronic so you can system put this information mm -hmm. in, the, in the smart contract and actually validate it but it doesn't mean that the person who is because a person can basically, let's say, take his own IMEI. Let's say I have an iPhone, and but I have a Samsung, shitty one, that I want to sell. Okay, not the Samsung, it's like a real old phone I want to sell. So I say that this Samsung that I have is actually iPhone, but it's not iPhone. Okay. I put my private IMEI of the smart contract, and I actually send you the Samsung. But the problem is that when you will get the phone, you need to validate it before you, let's say, you need to validate it to the smart contract that the phone that you got is actually iPhone. So you actually open it and you see that it's Samsung. Then you can basically take the IMEI, write what you've got, and the smart contract will return it to you. Okay. But the question is how the smart contract is going to know that you basically wrote what you've got. Okay. This is a, this is a whole different you know level of yeah, actually the, thinking. Are, how can we build that? So so there are two sides. There are two sides. I mean, the smart contract has to know that uh, this uh, code that it ha that, that the telephone has uh, is the right one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But in the first place, someone has to put this code into the smart contract to check that really this code is a is a good one. Okay. Right. So yeah, if I don't build if I don't build all the the serial numbers of the phones and put them into the smart contract, once the phone arrives, I have no way to check that this phone is. Uh, so this is, is back the to the code. basic of the smart contract. I mean, what is it? Uh, what 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 is the solution for it? So basically, this is where the miners are coming in. So let's say you have a miners center that when you are selling this phone, this phone is sending sent to this miner center. The people that are working there basically they are not belonging to anyone. They just make sure that the product that is sent is actually this product. It's the same way in Bitcoin. So there is the miners. The miners actually validate. Yeah, but you basically have this money and you can send it to that person. Yeah, but I see that in the Bitcoin world, everything happens online or, or I mean, in the software based. It's, there is no connection with the real world in the Bitcoin. I mean, I'm sending Bitcoins to you and then and, and yeah, but to, there other, to other person and miners. the miners. Uh, I mean, there, there, there are no miners checking in the real world. There is physical miners. There are the physical places where huge amount of mining hardware is set in order to do all of this. Yeah, I know that and these people are but, actually making but the, money. But the, but the job that they are doing is not checking physical things. It's not checking that this number is already I'm looking at this number into the telephone. Well you this can is make something it, you that can they are not it. doing the miners are, are not doing that. So basically I what I would suggest in this case, so for example, I am in Poland and the person that is selling the phone is actually in Poland and I become a node. This person has first to send me the phone. I have to validate that the phone is actually correct, and I will send this phone. If the person that is receiving the phone is validating that what I send him is actually iPhone, then I am receiving my cut because I did the validation, and the person that sold the phone will get his money because he sold his phone. So me as a miner, I am working, I'm doing the work, I'm basically shipping the iPhone, but if I lie and I say that this is a Samsung, and basically it's not, it's not an iPhone, then I am not getting my money. I'm not getting my cut. So there will have to be always a node that needs to verify that the transaction is real, that the information that is being put is real. Amazon is using it as a verification center when you're selling eBay, eBay basically. When you're selling a third party, when you're selling like, uh, something that is used, you basically send it to a verification center and then they are sending it out. So the, you, you're saying you're saying that the miner, the miners that they are producing these, they are verification centers. They are trustworthy parts of the network, and if they don't do the work, they don't get the money. Yes. So let's say that is in order to sell this phone, you basically maybe need to do a couple of verifications. So I got the phone. I verified that this is that the phone is, is uh, iPhone, and then I send this phone to another verifier, and they need to say that this phone is iPhone. But what, what can be done is that these people that are getting the iPhone don't know each other. 
Okay. They basically know the address only, or basically they have a specific code. Then they put this code in the address and they send it to the address. They don't know who is receiving it. So it's also decentralizing the post office because then the post office just put this code, let's say a hash code, on the package and they send it. And the oh. person who is sending it, okay. How, it. how can because I do that? No one is knowing how, who is taking the product, and more than one person is actually verifying. This is what also happening in the, when you send, for example, a Litecoin, you need, a, for example, six verification. You need at least six nodes to verify that you actually have this amount before you send it out. So you can actually basically do it, but it's is the it, way to look at it, how it's going to be done. Is it like that? I mean, you're verifying different ways that the thing that is going on is, is, is correct somehow? Or you ask only one node? Every transaction needs to be verified. Okay. So there is several number of confirmations okay. before the transaction is occurring, before okay, the transaction so, is happening. So if, so if we... I'm not sending from my wallet to basically uh, to an exchange and I want to sell something in the exchange, before my money will arrive to the exchange, the exchange is going to check that the money is arriving. It's already confirmed by different nodes in the network that are saying that this person actually had this money. Okay, uh, and all these confirmations are completely different and, to each uh, other, or are yeah. they the same confirmation? No, each each confirmation is coming from a different node. <clears throat> what does it mean? So each uh, each node has the whole ledger of the transaction. They have the whole history. Okay. And they know that in their history they can see that this account have actually some of this money. And then you go to another node. Hey, this account does he have this money? Yes. And then this account does he have this money? Yes. Then I got three confirmations. I need another three. Yeah, but do, more do, more let's don't go to the. Uh, I mean, because mm, to talking the about the accounts and bitcoins is the easy, is the easy part. Okay. <laughs> yeah, talking about course, iPhones. Course. Talking about iPhones because I don't it's see any difference between an iPhone and a training certification. Is nothing. That not, no, it's not that different. It's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. So if it's gonna work for an iPhone, I don't see why it's not gonna work for a training certification. I don't say it's not going to work. I think that it needs to be thought through more. Because why I do I, why do I trust the certification center? Maybe if you will have different. Okay, let's let's say it. let's say if I if one of the nodes of of this verification of an iPhone is the uh, the 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 producer the, the producer of the iPhone. Mm, I think is mm, trustworthy mo much more than the other ones. Yep. Or so, or yeah. so, so or so you <laughs> or you're buying from an Apple store that is somehow trusted into the network. So or, the training certification is the Apple store. Yeah. The training certification has has to have has to have some way somehow the uh, capabilities uh, of uh, uh, a smart contract or a way to put all the training certification whether they have been asked to to be checked or not all the training certification that they have issued they have to put them in a smart contract or um, whatever okay do, okay. do you agree awesome <laughs> so um uh, i i am still like lacking the part of who's gonna verify that the first certification um center is basically verified like there is still the like uh, let's say the, the verification center will say yes this employee have this record okay but the, the verification center can send basically to his old employee in the let's say that in his um, in his resume in his history we see this and this and this and this employee the, uh, uh, like companies that employ it. so the verification center basically can send to these companies hey does this guy have this uh, like does this guy have this uh, experience? Then they have to actually say yes. And then you send to another company, then another company. The more verification you have, the more trustworthy it will be. Yeah. This is the difference if you're taking this kind of private blockchain Definitely. or public. Compare it to a public blockchain where De you don't Definitely. need all of this I mean, because it's the already more, uh, The more verification I have, but how one guy that has not issued that training certification can verify that the training certification I have is valid. Then he needs to go to the verification center, do the training, finish the certificate, and actually prove that he did this. Yeah. Then the verification center needs to put this data on the blockchain and send it. This is the, the difference. When when there is a private blockchain, 
the node that is putting the information is controlling what information is being put. And it, it, the more people will be able to actually participate in this system, the higher the trust will go. Yeah, but in this system, for example, if we start with 200,000 uh, users, uh, 20,000 companies and 10,000 uh, 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 I mean, training centers, I think there are a huge amount of people are, um, I mean, it's not a question of two guys saying do your, your training certification is valid or not. There are thousands of guys out there. And it's still private because <laughs> there are only training certification centers, there are only companies and there are only blue collar workers. I mean, how a training certification for, uh, I mean, a music training um, center can certify that I have a welding thing okay. in your, in your, in, in the blockchain. No, I mean, from my side, there, there is no way this guy, I mean, he's not trust, trustworthy for me so, that a piano um, teacher um, tells me you, you have your, your welding capabilities are, um, capabilities are okay. No, okay. I don't see. no but I, okay, I, then I understand what is Hassan's point. I mean, um, into the verification, into the, the verifying authorities that they will be able to tell you what uh, the, your capabilities are, you need to have another layer on top certifying that this specific center has the right um, capabilities of issuing this kind of certification. Does it make sense? Okay. I'll, it does make sense. I'm thinking about it like, okay, the, the verification center gave it, gave it a certification that said that this employee had the experience, but then the more people will participate in the whole ecosystem, the more nodes will actually certify this person. Yes. So basically, yeah. yes. his manager can certify him. His, I don't know, his private company, the person who paid him. Uh, the more the more confirmations over this person you got, the more trustworthy he will be in your eyes. Okay. okay. So this is a little bit like, I, I'm going to be putting an example with a friend of us, uh, Carmen Vélez, who worked, uh, sorry, who, who is, uh, she, she was studying with us at the university. Okay, we both, Alex and I, we need to be bringing our very old car into service because we need to get a certification that our car could be running. So I go to something that is called ITV, so technical, technical verification, inspection. inspection of my vehicle. Okay, I go there and it happens that I know someone there that works there. So he's going to be giving me for free, although it's cheating because I'm, I'm, my car is not entitled to go to the because it's too old, uh, he's going to be giving me that certification, okay? Mm -hmm. But it happens that my, our friend Carmen works for the certification verification of those systems in the area. So she's, she's somehow the police of the police people around. So does it imply that if they are doing something private, do, do they have to have another layer, another system on top that will be able to certify that what they're doing is somehow okay? Is trust so, worth it? Uh, it's, it's a very good example. I like it. Because when I want to buy a car, I take it to a place to check it. Or I take it to my private technical person yeah. to check it also. Because I trust him more than I trust this center. Okay. But let's say that the person have to actually go to different centers. But each time to go, you go to, to a center to check okay. your car, you need to pay money, right? So let's say your car is worth $50,000. And each time you do this test, it costs you $1,000. So if you need to certify your car in five different places, uh, you need to pay $5,000. If you want to take all of them, you need to bribe all of them. Then it will not be very, basically, it will not be a very... You know, profitable for you to do it. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, in your system, it has to be verified against different ones to be sure that it will be yeah. working like that. And that is a little bit uh, against uh, what they have in into Clever be because they can only be verified against one single. Well, maybe what we can l look is at the verification of not just the training center, but uh, how many. Uh, co-workers can um, verify that you have this training. 
so you have like different ver verification to be sure that this person has the capabilities in different layers one Does is the training center the other one is co-workers yeah. the third one it has to be bringing some references or does it make sense into the uh, Blo a blockchain world, Hosam. Sorry, <laughs> this is getting yeah, complicated. Think it's true. I think I think there is a way to get it to the way that it will be fully trusted, but it needs to be thought through. There is the more we go deep into thinking how it can be actually more trusted. It can, let's say, if I am the employee, then in order to get certificate, I need to pay the certification center. Okay, let, let's and then say I need, and then I need to pay uh, my ex manager in order to do that. It could look like that I'm bribing them to give me the certificate, yeah. but it doesn't also worth me if the token is like 100 bucks. Then what? I need to pay I don't know 10 people or 100 bucks to get certificate. Yeah. Then it's like it doesn't worth it for me if I don't have the experience because whenever I will go on the site to work, the manager will see that I don't know how to work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Understood. basically, if I'm cheating, at some point I will be caught, and then basically everything that I paid or I lose my whole history. Basically, if a manager said that, or someone said, or verified that I don't know how to work, he will also have to prove it. Then how okay. is that going to work? Okay, great. There's so, different layers to think of it. I think it's, an, it's a very good thing that has to be done, because it will bring the blue-collar employees inside of the ecosystem. It will be easier for them to participate in the economy. It will be easier for companies actually to hire. And it will be easier also for uh, people who are looking for like and jobs like this or looking to find jobs. Ahead opening of the LinkedIn. Yeah. Sorry, keep on, Hosan. Yeah, I, I just said that it's, it's basically, in my point of view, it's opening the industry wider. Okay. Because if I want to do some construction, if I if look at it, not in the B2B, look at it in the B2C. If I want to do some instruction in my house, I'm calling the guy, hey, come fix the fridge. I don't know if he actually knows how to fix the fridge. He might change some parts, take money, and leave the house and never come back. Yeah. No, no, I... But I want to know that he's actually certified to actually do the fridge. Then I need to check his history. If this is actually recorded in a, on the blockchain and someone already validated his history, then I will call him and I will be like, you know, with a, let's say I will be confident that he will be able to do that. Okay. I, I think it's a, it's a right time now to wrap up a little bit. We, we, we've been very deep into the <laughs> bits and bytes of the, the system. Uh, I mm -hmm. think you were touching, if, if you look at the slide right now that is on the, the screen, I don't know if you still get the screen. Is yeah, the, I see. Yeah, we were into the business model definition. Yeah. Could yeah, you say a, a building execution roadmap? I mean, what will have to be in, yeah. put in place? Uh, Business model definition. We have we have talked a little bit about it. In, yeah. In how, uh, I mean, the the blue the, the worker is gonna pay to the training center and the, yeah. uh, to check to, to get this in, in the, the certification validated and and the, the uh, and they are gonna get money out of the the companies or the training centers for sharing his information. Yeah. I mean, this this would be the the, the business model. So, Hosan, public or mm -hmm. private blockchain? Public or private. This is In a question for you. you. Being public. private, being private. No, 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 no. It's Hosan who, who needs to be answering. He's yes, the yes. Now. I, I want to clarify what the mean. What's the meaning of private? I mean, private is private to the thousands or hundreds of thousands of people, companies, and training centers that are in the world. Okay. So, so the, it's public, but for specific industries. This yes. Is okay. a, this is the case that I'm looking for. Yes. Yes. So yeah, this is a like a gay it's club. A hybrid gay, or yeah, 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 whatever. This is what, what uh, this this is what the use case should be. This is gonna be like for specific industry for specific people that's gonna be using it. So of the gay thing. So the, is the solution an ICO? Do you think uh, it could be a way of getting in or? Well, so far we haven't talked about uh, 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 if it's needed a, a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Or not, it, or, or a token, not. or not. It's just a, a, a blockchain base. However, as long as we are going to exchange services like the, mm, I mean, giving away the, the sharing the information or, or asking for uh, checking certification, uh, there, are, um, there can be tokens involved in all those tra transactions. Yeah. Okay, that uh, we are going to issue a coin that uh, all the users will use to uh, pay for the services that they are requesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that it make sense? 
Hosan, question for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So okay. And this is, uh, I mean, those coins or tokens are the same tokens that any other blockchain application has in um, the same meaning. I mean, because those tokens are the tokens that are in, going to interchange the users. It's nothing uh, so far. We haven't talked about the investors that are getting tokens. Or do they? The, if they are the same if, tokens, right? So, if your token is basically a functionality inside of the ecosystem that you're de developing for the blue link employees. So, for example, if I'm a blue link, uh, if I'm working, in, if I'm using blue link, I'm a blue color worker, and in order to get certified, certified, I need to use the blue uh, blue token. Uh, so, the, the, the blue token is changing hands. Yes. Uh, the investor, the person who invested in the ICO. He might be, uh, he might not coming from this industry, but he sees the potential of it. So he's just, he is speculating that if he will buy these tokens and hold them on the side, their price might go up and he can sell them and make profit. Okay. This is what well, this is one option. Second option is like you can build this project and say that anyone who is going to be investing or holding these tokens will get specific dividends, and then the whole project is moving to some other different layer. Not just, because you know, not I the have functionality only, also dividends. My, my proposal on this is let's try to make the companies and the training certification the investors of the system. Because as long yeah. as they are investors, they will push the system to grow. Of course. They will, they will be part of it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. So... Interesting. Very okay. I'm I'm yeah, very exhausted. I don't know about you. I mean, I for me it was a completely different topic. I'm I'm really worried that everybody is is having a hard time as I'm yeah, having. And so though. so I need I need yeah to extract everything and put it I don't know where. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that would be a completely different thing, and I don't know if you yeah. are able to give us a light about it. It's like what to do in order uh, if you want to raise a, an ICO. So, is it possible you give us some information about it uh, later on? I mean, I am uh, not. So, whenever you would like, I, I have you know I have it ready basically. Okay, so can you share it with us and with all these startups about? Yeah, the thing they need to be doing, or what do you think they need to be doing? Yeah, sure. Uh, can you <laughs> close your screen so I can open mine? You will not have too much uh, things on the map. Close this, oh. close this screen. So close. Stop. Close, cl I mean, close the sharing from your side. Yeah, great. So now it is. And now. Are you, are I'm sharing mine. Wait a second. Uh, I will not go in deep in it because I think we have, like, I don't know how much time we still have left. Okay, I but, don't, but we what, don't have what any. Do you need? Basically, let's say, let's say I will take this and implement it on, on Blue Link, okay? okay? So first you need the product uh, or the idea. Let's say the Blue Link idea, okay? Then afterwards so you will need a team. And in the case of Blue Link, they have all their people who are working there. So it's a very positive thing because there is experienced people over there. There is uh, also, you know, uh, different people from different industries. You can actually brainstorm the whole idea and build it better. And there's people that you trust and you know they're you know you know how they work so basically you need the product you need the team this team actually also need to have someone who is experienced in the blockchain industry someone who already did such projects you need a business plan i was already explained in the blue link uh, case you will need a white paper also was mentioned there so white paper is used basically to clarify to the people who are going to buy these tokens what this project is going to be doing and it also to also give hints what what's gonna happen with these tokens, how these tokens gonna work, who are the people who are building it. So also you need to put in the white paper the team. You need basically to put everything that you will be doing inside of the white paper to be basically transparent with the investors. You need a website in order to run the ICO, and I will go back to the website because it's a really important part. You need a customer support. Whenever whenever you're doing the ICO, there will be a lot of people. Uh, approaching you and asking questions about your project. So I'm, I'm not talking about 1,000 and 2,000 people. I'm talking about maybe 10,000 emails that you will receive every day. If your product, if your project is going viral, you will be receiving a lot of questions. Even the questions that you don't imagine that you, they will be asked, even the simplest and the, the smallest questions. And sometimes these questions also, the people who are investing, they're investing maybe 100 bucks. 
but you have to answer everyone. You have to give support to everyone. Okay. The, the marketing side is one of the most important things because it's also one of the most expensive parts of the ICO. Uh, it's also including the PR. And, uh, and the, uh, when you're talking about marketing for ICO, it's totally different than when you're selling a normal product. Here you're selling investment to someone. You need basically to get into their head in order to sell the investment, in order to convince them that this product or this project is going to change something in the industry, is going to bring value, and they should actually invest in it. So it's basically, you need to build a specific strategy how to get to these people. I, I think this is not, is very close to an IPO, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, is what they so did. In the, way of, in the way of thinking. And also, one, one thing that is funny here. I, like, been, I don't see investors, for example, clicking, yeah. clicking on AdWords or banners. It could be nice to bring visibility, but it's not good enough to actually bring a lot of investors. So, like, basically, if I see a banner or if I see an AdWords, that, hey, come invest in our ICO. It's, it looks cheap to click on it and go and invest in it. It's better to use these AdWords to basically give information and not sell the investment. Actually, to bring people to your website to get more information. And then, if they love the information, they will invest. Another three very important parts are the cybersecurity. So basically, you need to make sure that your website is secure because you can do all of that steps that I already said, and then your website is not secure, someone can hack you, change the address on the website of the Ethereum wallet, and basically people like, will be sending Ethereum to, the, to another wallet. Or your email is not secured enough, you're not using all the security measurements, and someone can hack your email and get a lot of information and basically get the money out. So you need to have a good team and good security uh, measurement. Another thing is the smart contract and the auditing of the smart contract. So you basically need to have the smart contract that will handle the process of the ICO, where the people will be sending money. And what is important about the smart contract is some projects have milestones. What does it mean? So basically when you're raising money, you let's say you raise 25 million, but when the ICO is done, you don't get all the money. Some of the money will be locked on the smart contract, and only when you achieve specific steps, you trigger the smart contract and you get the money. In order, you release more money to basically keep building this uh, project. Okay. Why is it good for the future? Because when I'm investing, I want to know that when you get the 25 million, you're not just going to waste it. I want to know that you will have money and you have to work to get the rest of the money. But it's over there in the smart contract waiting for you. This is one, one approach that some uh, ICOs are taking. There's other ICOs that are not doing this. But most of the ICOs that basically did use milestones in their smart contract, they raise much more money because the trust is higher here. And the auditing of the smart contract, you need to make sure that the smart contract is well written and it's uh, secured. That, that um, people cannot basically, um, your smart contract is built good. So, because if you have any problem with a smart contract and there's any flaw in the smart contract, someone basically can uh, trigger it and take money out of it. It, it happened already in the, in the past where someone built a program really bad. It's the same as you build a platform for any use and the platform is basically not secured or the platform has bugs. Okay, one one, one quick question, Hosan. Yeah. All of these cost money. What is the yeah. minimum size of the ICO to make all these things um, sense? I will go for it. There's only yeah. one part that I didn't cover: the legal Sorry. and compliance. This is one of the most important issues. If you are not a if you are not a company, you're someone new, and you want to do the, the ICO, you need to figure out where are you doing it. And it's also going to cost you money. Where are you doing it? Because some countries are regulated, other jurisdictions and countries are not regulated at all. So you can basically do the ICO and no one will ask you anything. But the question, is this the right approach? Because when they will be regulated, you might need licenses and they might say, hey, you need to shut down your business because it's not compelling with the regulations now. Okay. Or you go to a regulated place, but you need to pay uh, lawyers and you need to get some licenses in order to run. Um, the cost of the ICO as you ask, it can vary, depending. If you have a good team, they can build the product, they can build the business plan, they can build the white paper. If you have copywriters in your business, they can also copyright the white paper. If you have uh, people who will build the website in-house, if you can do everything in-house, that's great. Then the cost is gonna be very minimal, maybe only for the auditing part. Because when you build the smart contract, um, you need to actually get auditing. You need to get other companies to check it and say this smart contract is good and ready to do an ICO. So there are several companies in the industry that basically you send them your product, you send them your smart contract code, and you pay them money, 
they check it and they publish, uh, they can publish online, they should basically publish online opinion about the smart contract. If it's secure, if it's have problems, if they think that you need to change this and that, you need to give enough time to these companies to basically check it and give you opinion. And if you have more opinion from different companies and the opinion is good, then your smart contract is ready. This okay. part can cost, for example, uh, $20,000 up to $100,000 depending how complicated is your smart contract. Okay. The whole process of ICO can vary between, let's say, if you want to outsource it to a company that will do everything for you, you just come with the product and the team. But they help you with all the rest. It can cost you between 250k dollars up to half million dollars. Wow. Plus, plus some of these companies also take a success fee. They can take three up to five percent success fee. What does it mean? That if you're at 25 million, they will take three percent of the 25 million you raise. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, this is a lot of money. This is why it's better always, you know. So it's it's money. not for startups. What? It's what? Is not for startups. So it is for really grown up company. Unless you uh, do not, everything at home. Uh, not in house. necessarily. Not necessarily, because you can build the product, you can have the team. Business plan and white paper you can also do by your own. You don't need to have all the yeah. highest levels. And with it, you can go to investors or VCs that actually will help you fund the ICO itself. Yeah, okay. They can cover all the rest. And basically, some of these VCs have actually connections with, with other companies that can help you doing marketing. They will cover for you the marketing. They can help you with this. Yeah. It's basically, okay. you're going to have to connect with other people. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, that's it from, from this part. Thank you. Great. <sighs> okay. Very, very, very in-depth. And uh, I, I need to say very, uh, very much uh, thank you for everything you do. Uh, everything you said to us. And I'm, yeah, and I'm worried that this in this isn't uh, happening online. So we are we are canned uh, this video. We are putting uh, online uh, in, with our YouTube, so uh, we can revisit and and everything. Is it okay if we get your presentation also? Yeah, yeah, sure. I will send it to you. Thank you. And if we get any queries about someone that wants to start an ICO, uh, is it okay if we give you your uh, contact Hello. details in order that you can get some money. <laughs> I would be glad to help, of course. Uh, if, if I cannot help with what they want to do, then I will try to find people that actually can help. This is like my approach always. Yeah. If I don't know, know how to do something or I don't know something, then I will just try to find someone who will also help to do it. Yeah. With yeah. Th thank you, Hossam. I think you you comprise the uh, what we need as mentors. It's like giving away or giving your expertise and everything. And and uh, I need to thank you for everything you say. Uh, we have one thing that we need to show, and it is the video. Sorry, it is how how long is the video? It's about three minutes. The video, which one? The stratosphere video. Yeah, it's one minute. It's one minute. Okay, this is this is for you also. Uh, we will be able to share online. So this is a video about what? Okay. Uh, space walk. A space walk. Okay. I'm, I'm really <laughs> worried walk. about what we are going to be <laughs> doing. So, uh, okay. So I'll share this screen with you and that will be the end of the video. So uh, we can, we can clap uh, uh, at the end and then it will be the end of this, of this lecture. So, sure. so I'll share the screen. Uh, yeah. Do we start and then is it the Paseo Espacial Sonido? Yes. And uh, should I open with what? Uh, with quick, quick time? time? Quick time. Quick it's time. Fine and put it in, in the whole. In, in, okay. Do it and then I'm worried about what we are going to be seeing. Do you see it? Yes. So what is this? Okay. Yeah, we need an explanation. It's a, it's a model of the, the space shuttle and a, a, a astronaut walking. Yeah. They are in the stratosphere. I mean, we are right now in a, like a 35 kilometers high in the sky. And this is the sound, the, the, that light that you're, you're looking at. The black thing is the outer space. Okay. And this blue line that is, I mean, separates the, the Earth and the, the outer space is the, the, the sky. Okay. So this is some of the projects that we do with the, with the kids. 
Oh, well, not, not kids. Not, not kids. I mean, they are 16 years old, and this. They, they, send they, they prepare the whole thing. The, I mean, we do that with the stratospheric balloons, mm -hmm. with helium, and they uh, build a capsule, a stratospheric ca capsule. Actually, this is uh, this is Cotodoniana. Oh. Oh. These are these are the strides or of Gibraltar. Oh, Gibraltar. Yes, oh, wow. This is the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. The coast of Africa. Um, um, I mean, this is so, we, Sam, we record do you, do with you our see the cameras. videos? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> so at the end it works. Something works. I, I was clapping, but I don't know if you heard me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you, you were clapping. You were the one. So thank you for your time. Uh, we are going to be clapping at your end, so you get the uh, the final clap also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.